Hey, welcome back to Wendell Fishing. Darren here. It's 2022 and I'm going to take you through a detailed walkthrough of my fishing kayak, both my upgrades and my DIY modifications. And not only that, I'm going to also show you what gear, what tackle, what rods they take with me when I'm out in the water. So we are going to be putting all of this onto my Native Slayer Propel 10. Now don't worry, if you don't have a Native Slayer Propel 10, the modifications, the upgrades I have are good for just about any kayak out there. So stick around and let's hop in. All right, let's start with the seats. <clears throat> Fishing kayak doesn't look much like anything without the seat. Probably see already, these are not standard with the Native Slayer Propel 10. And so these are actually 3D printed seat risers, which are pretty awesome. I got them off of, on Facebook, a guy uh, called 3D Yak does a great job. So I highly recommend those. I'll put the link in the description below. But this gets uh, my seat up off uh, just a few more inches, which is nice because I actually have a, an upgrade in which I will put a um, extra storage underneath the seat. So I'll show you that in just a moment. The seat is set. Now we're gonna hop over here and grab a DIY modification that I built. This is a kayak crate with six rod holders. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what we'll do is actually bungee this down to these little knobbers here. We'll run the bungee cord. If you don't have bungee cord, you can go and grab that at the uh, local hardware store. They sell it by the foot, which is nice. And you run it back and forth. So if you ever tip your kayak, it's not coming off. Also, you can see here, uh, the way I built this is there's a screw through here. And so if you, you like your rod holder straight up and down, you can do that. I actually like them fanned out a little bit so they don't get caught. Uh, and also what you'll see here, if you fish rough waters, um, these are the little bungees so you can get onto your rod. So if you ever tip your boat, then you won't lose all of your gear. Uh, you also see in here, uh, I put a ton of stuff in here, which I'll show you just in a little bit. Um, there's some tools, there's a cable here right now, but um, also got a little lock right here. So it's not going to come off and then you got this bungee mesh here so you can put your hat or your scale or your lunch or whatever it is under here this thing is awesome it's not that expensive and it's not that difficult to create i actually created a video to show you how to do that uh you can check that out right there if you want to build one of these for yourself I think it cost me around 25 bucks to do that and man they are awesome highly recommend that here's the bungee i was talking about it's about seven feet long not that you can just run it back and forth, we'll do that real fast. Let's start off tying a knot through here and just run it through once. And I'll catch. So just run it back and forth. Alright, now that we have that all bungee downed. We are good to go with the crate. Next, we're gonna install the Yak Attack Pro Mega rod holders. Make sure you get the Pro Mega because there's two points of adjustment on the Pro. A Yak Attack uh, Pro Mega rod holders, and these things are absolutely awesome. So when you receive these, it basically comes with this. Now be prepared for a little sticker shock because these things are around. Last time I checked, around forty dollars each, and two of them you're in eighty dollars. But these are really well made, very heavy duty, and so all you do is, uh, if you have a track mount, it takes a little track mount adapter, stick it on the track mount, and you tighten it with your hand. And then all you need to do now, um, these have little rivets on it. Once you put it in the socket there, you can actually change where you want that. And then it'll help wherever you want your rod. You know, it's taken way out here at the side, you want it out to the So I use these often for um, trolling, and that's why I love them so much. It's also great if you're changing out a lure, you can just stick it in, stick it in here real quick, and you have your, both your hands free, which is super nice. Another good thing about this is once you lock it in here, click, it's not coming out. I've actually caught the bottom of the lake before and these things tug and tug and they will not break. So uh, very heavy duty, it's gonna be worth your investment for sure. Uh, also a great thing about the Omega Pro, um, like I said, two points that you can adjust. See the twisties uh, a little bit and then you can go down, down, up. You can do the same thing over here. Now you can buy the Yak Attack rod holders um, with just one single point, but I recommend just investing the extra $10 so you have a little bit more uh, options here when it comes to where you want your rod angled at. So highly recommended for trolling. Um, what I love about this is whenever I'm trolling with these, a lot of times when you're kayak fishing, you just can't crank up the motor and take off and in five minutes be your next spot. So a lot of times what I'll do, uh, if I need a little break, I'll put two rods in here, a couple crankbaits, and you'd be surprised how many bass and crappie, even catfish I pick up through trolling from spot to spot. So pretty awesome, 
highly recommend investing in some Yak Attack Pro Rod Holders, and I have the links in the description below. Another great thing about these is I actually never, you can lock these, it's called lock and loads. Um, I've never locked them, I just, because I like to quickly grab my rod out, and I've never had an issue with this even remotely falling in. But if you wanted to, you can actually flick this up, flick it back here, and lock it in. And you might want to do that, especially if you're catfishing or anything like that, but I always leave mine open and actually just let my spinning reel, which is what I'm usually using, that or a bait caster, um, just stick out the end here. Actually, the bait caster is nice. I actually leave those up in here. So I'm gonna actually go grab a bait caster and show you what it looks like. All right, this is my SLX, um, but the reality is I don't troll with my bait casting rod. So this is just sitting in there. So it sits in there nicely, not a big deal. You can lock it in, but that's how that looks. All right, let's move on to the next thing. All right, I have a Nata Slayer Propel 10, and the Propel means it's a pedal drive. So let's go ahead and stick this bad boy in there. Slides in nicely. Lock it in. Don't come out. All right, this is really simple. These things are really neat. If you haven't had a pedal drive before, all you do is unstrap your bungee here, lift it up, and then this goes down into the water, and then you lock it in. Um, man, that's how you get from place to place right there. So there's a couple modifications you can do here. I actually have a weed guard that I installed right here. Uh, it looks like it's 3D printed as well. Um, so you can order those. I'll try to put a link in the description below. And there's another upgrade you can do to this. And it's a really simple upgrade. If you buy this stock, it actually comes with plastic uh, pedals, which I'm not a big fan of. So I just upgraded these to aluminum mountain bike pedals. They're solid, I, I don't slip anymore. And these things, I think they look super nice. So, big fan of these. Uh, I got a link in the description below. I can't forget my Ram phone mount with all the kinds of articulating uh, mount as well, which is really awesome. So I stick my phone in here, and as you can see, loosen it up, um, kind of whatever, wherever you want it, whatever angle you want it, tighten that bad boy up. And this is grabs onto your phone, which is super nice. And then it's right there, front and center, when you're fishing, if you get a message, you're talking with someone, you're on video with someone. Um, these are awesome. Great thing about the pull drive, you can actually buy a mount that sticks right into the top, made for something just like this. Uh, I've seen guys also put their fish finders up here, but I have my fish finder down on the side. We'll get that in just a second. Next, we have the native tool holder. This might not look like a whole lot, but man, this thing is super convenient. And it goes right here. Really, really easy to install. Essentially what you do, is screw it on simple simple um, i kick this down here out of my way down by my legs it never really gets in my way uh, and this is where i keep all the stuff i use all the time so let me show you some of the things grab a handful pliers scissors lucky rig tool almost forgot uh, what i'll do as you can see with these boom pliers here Aluminum pliers, great, great, great pliers. So, uh, highly recommend these. If you don't have a pair of aluminum, nice aluminum pliers, not needle nose work pliers. I mean, fishing pliers, this is the way to go. And the great thing about these booms, it comes with a sheath and it actually has a rivet here. And so, what I'll do is unscrew this and just add this as a layer on top of it. Screw that in. Boom, right in here. And it's leashed, as you can see here. And then they're all, I constantly come down here reaching, pulling it up, um, getting the hook out of the fish mouth that's buried, sticking them back in there. Also, of course, got my scissors. I always like having scissors, because sometimes I use braid, and these boom pliers, the cutting, a uh, little place where you can cut isn't sharp enough, so I always bring some titanium scissors. Wacky tool, sometimes I keep in here, sometimes I keep in my under seat storage. All right, this one's one of my favorite upgrades, and it is this guy right here. Called a Craftsman Versa Stack, and it goes right under your seat. This is why you're gonna need your um, seat risers, your 3D printed seat risers. So let me go ahead and install this. Um, now, I've had a hard time finding the link for these guys, and so, but De DeWalt makes one that looks just like it and will fit right under your seat as well. So I'll have the link in the description below. But man, these things are awesome. I'm gonna put it under here and talk about easy accessibility, just reaching right under here. Look at all that storage space. 
nine compartments here. I'm gonna get yeah, two of them. I'll show you what I keep in these in just a moment, but man, it is so nice having these right below you. Um, ton of storage sitting right underneath you. Man, grab one of these guys. Next we have the DIY boom mount. Now I actually created this guy right here. Um, they're like $100 or so if you go look online. So I also want a one that I can use with my family when I go into family outings. And so I created this guy as kind of a DIY modification. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Man, this thing's awesome and it's telescopic too. So you can send this thing way out here if you want. Another thing I have for this, uh, because it's up over your shoulder, you don't have to like get out of your kayak, try to get it while it's way back here and try to change out batteries all the time. So you, what I did is I ran all day power. You see down here, I have a power bank. Uh, DB power, this thing's awesome, has a ton of power on it. It actually will charge your car <laughs> as well. And so this definitely lasts me all day. I have a type C cable that I run out to the side and then you can just wrap this around all the way and extend it up. And as you can see, the type C just fits right here. So you will have all day power for your GoPro uh, on your DIY GoPro boom mount. So highly recommend that. Don't buy a ton of batteries, just buy some power banks. All right, she's starting to come together. The next upgrade is pretty important, although it's not extremely attractive. Uh, so this is your steering mechanism. If I turn this back and forth, this is what you get back here. And a lot of times, what you're looking at here is a, a Burley Pro upgrade. Uh, this is Dyneema cord, which I highly recommend. They come stock with metal. At least they did. I'm not sure if they do now. So you can upgrade this for, man, they're kind of expensive and it's kind of a pain to butt to run, but nonetheless, highly recommend upgrading if you have a kayak like this. So Dyneema cord stuff lasts for a long time. I've had this for a couple seasons with no issue at all. Next, I'm going to show you uh, kind of your power source for all this. Let's grab, grab the batteries I use. You just grab these off Amazon. As you can see here, it's a 12 volt, um, 12 amp hour. Uh, the higher the amp hour, the more expensive the battery is going to be. However, the longer it'll last you out there in the water. But this seems to do me just fine when I'm out for six, seven hours out in the water. 12 amp hour, 12 volt. Um, so what I'll do is, um, this is how I run my fish finder, it's how I run my lights, which is going to be the next DIY upgrade that I'm going to show you here in just a second. So basically put this down in the hull, attach the terminals. Voila. Voila. I ran all the wiring and I, I installed this uh, flicker switch. Boom. Now, as you see, I got this side. I got them running on this side. And I also got on the inside of the boat. Now, here's the thing if I were to do it again, I would actually have a, either just remove the lights from the inside of the boat and I just leave them on the outside of the boat or I create two toggle switches. Uh, one that would be for the inside and outside. And the reason why is when you're out there in the water and it's definitely pitch black outside, um, the lights on the inside of the boat are a little overwhelming and they're not really even that necessary. Uh, I usually use the lights a lot of times when I get to my spot really early and I can't see because it's still dark in the morning. Uh, not necessarily when I'm out in the water, but I have used these when I'm out in the water and man, it's crazy. You can see the bass come up and smashing it. All the, a lot of the bait fish are attracted to the green light. That's why I chose green. And so if you're gonna get that, get the green light um, or get the kind that you can change colors on, but how they recommend the green. So these look pretty sweet. Now this particular kayak is around 65 uh, pounds without all the upgrades. And so it starts to get really heavy and very difficult to move around if you're pond hopping and moving in and out of your trailer uh, all the time. And so instead of dragging this along the concrete and believe it, I've seen people do it, which just drives me absolutely crazy. Um, you're gonna need some type of landing gear. I recommend the native watercraft landing gear. Uh, here are the wheels for it. And they're really easy to install. You basically just run this mounting bracket onto your track mounts and then this just sticks in here like so and so i have them way back here now granted when you stick them further back a lot more weight on them i've actually seen reviews of these ripping out of the plastic but i have any issues with that i actually might move it back up in front of the, uh, the kayak crate move this back but we'll see the reason i like it back here because it acts as a bumper if i ever bump into like a dock or anything and also as you can see here we'll get to this in a second i don't want to break this off so having a bumper is really kind of nice and then of course when you're getting ready to drag this into the water you can just move it down like so and then you just kind of 
hook up here and just drag it to where you need to do and kind of push it backwards into the water and you are golden. So uh, once again, get ready for some sticker shock on those bad boys. They are not inexpensive and there's a lot of DIY options out there, but man, uh, the rubber wheels are awesome. And I just, man, if you're gonna invest in a couple thousand into a boat, spend a couple extra hundred uh, taking care of getting it to and from the water. Another simple little upgrade you can do is put a little tow rope in here, as you can see here. Um, I always have this. Sometimes I forget something and I need to tie off my boat instead of like running really fast and hoping it doesn't float away. Just quickly tie that off. Usually you can find a really easy place to put that. And I always, always leave that here, right in here in the front. Next little upgrade here is the behind the seat backpack. And man, you can buy these things from Native that kind of fit nicely behind here. But man, you can go to Walmart and get one of these for 20 bucks or go to Amazon and get a mull bag um, for really inexpensive for like $30, $40. And I highly recommend a behind the seat backpack because you don't have a lot of storage space, a lot of real estate here on your fishing kayak. So having something back here that you can fit a ton of stuff and I'll share all the things that I put back here is highly beneficial. So um, you really, really simple to kind of attach this over the shoulder, run this around the strap so it'll never fly off. I just keep it on there when I'm rolling down the road. So no issues at all. So, all right, there we are strapped in. I've uh, got this nice and tight. I actually fit my, uh, uh, I fit a couple things behind here. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, stick my wallet up here all the time and then you got a ton of room for all kinds of things. Really nice, highly recommend one of these guys. Fits nicely behind there and I know I carry a small net sometimes and also fit, uh, well I'll get there in a second. Next is this guy. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, I would not go through the hassle of buying a really nice kayak and going out in the water without one of these guys. Fish finder. This is a Garmin Striker 4. It's an entry level fish finder. And uh, man, it's just not worth going out there not knowing the fish under you, not knowing the depth under you, not knowing how fast you're going, especially for trolling. And so, and there's a lot of fish finders out there that can get really, really expensive. This one's around $100, $115, depending on what kind of deal you can get on Amazon. And uh, I'm gonna get this hooked up, show you what it looks like. But man, highly recommend a really inexpensive fish finder if you're not really into it, so don't go out that often. This is really nice, it just clips in here. Just like that and then just have my wires that run into the back my power and then I got my transducer as you can see here a nice point of view right towards your fish finder uh, I can see I have the wires kind of wrapped down here in the t-mount so it's nice and clean and which brings me to my next upgrade which is the yak attack switchblade which is basically a transducer arm and uh, here's the thing um, I am not a huge fan of the switchblade I don't I don't think it necessarily needs to be here um, you can go ahead and stick this up uh, really nicely if you're gonna if you get into some weeds or getting ready to pull your boat out uh, put it back down when you're in the water kind of moves you hit something it'll kind of fly back here um, and it's not a huge fan as you can see here if you don't tighten it correctly it'll crack and uh, I didn't tighten it correctly and it cracked. What I'm gonna try for the next upcoming season is I heard you can take these transducers right here this guy and stick it in putty and stick it at the bottom of the hole and you won't have any issues. So what I'm probably gonna do is do a video of that here uh, in the upcoming weeks. So hit that sub and bell notification and you'll get notified when that video goes live. All right, let's keep on moving along. All right, next one's kind of fun. I noticed when I got the, the kayak, you know, you got this rudder right here, but it wasn't turning as fast as I'd like it to turn. So what I ended up doing is uh, putting a little extension on here. A lot of different ways to do that. You can get some plexiglass, got some bolts, um, kind of just shove that in there. And it's worked like a charm and it turns a lot faster. It's really nice. The thing you gotta be careful about is whenever you're moving it around outside of the water so you don't snap this off. There are some other options and I have a feeling I'll probably purchase them. Um, Boondocks makes a metal rudder, which I like. And so until this breaks, I probably won't uh, invest in a Boondocks, but I have a feeling that this will break because it's plastic and it's just a matter of time before I accidentally snap that off. But I'll throw the Boondocks rudder, which I'm probably gonna buy myself, uh, down in the description below. But if you wanted to do an extension, it's really easy. Uh, I didn't do a DIY video for it, just because it's pretty simple. You kind of look at it and figure it out yourself. Um, but that's that bad boy. All right, move along. And next we got a DIY keel guard. There you go, guys. This is pretty awesome. It's one of my recents here. That's why you see um, the silicone looks fairly new. Uh, but I, I was getting a lot of deep gashes in here. And so uh, what this is, and I did a video for it, you can check that out up here. Uh, you can probably click that in the cards as well. Yeah, this is Kydex. Kydex is awesome because it's got a Rockwell hardness of nine. 
And once you heat it up, it's very malleable. So you can kind of mold it to the hull of your kayak. And it's actually pretty inexpensive. You get a sheet of this stuff or a couple sheets for like 10 bucks. And so I actually did a video. You can check that out here in a little bit. But as you can see, I not only have one in the front, but I also got one in the back. I got some scuffs here. And so you just mold it. I molded it around this back part here and just uh, reinforce the back of my boat which i'm pretty excited about so to be fair i had a guy ask me on my channel hey did it hold up well i've only had it out a few times and i don't feel comfortable doing a video if it held up until i actually use it for an entire season but there's a lot of other videos out there as well as it says kydex is the way to go uh, i've seen people use gorilla tape seriously not gonna work for you folks uh, there's a lot of other cheap ways but um, this is probably the cheapest go and what you get is a really high quality keel guard that's going to protect your kayak so you have it for years to come all right next i have my paddle here uh, and the reality is i didn't invest a whole lot of money into my paddle i don't need a really expensive one because i got a pedal drive so i really only break this out when i get caught in the weeds and my pedal drive propellers are all caught in weeds and this one's really cheap it's an intex one i think i got it for 30 dollars. i'll put the link on there and it's nice uh, the reality is it's a it's a pull apart one you can take it apart in a couple pieces which is nice and so nothing crazy here if i didn't have a pedal drive i'd probably invest in a paddle around the 60 to 100 dollar range make sure it's a uh, sturdy uh, shaft um, it makes a whole lot of difference when you're paddling through the water you don't want this to give a whole lot and so this is very economical and it's just what I need but you may have different uses for it so you might want to invest a little bit more in the paddle another thing I always keep in my kayak is a sponge and a lot of times when you're kayaking uh, you bring a fish in the boat you always get the water either here at the bottom down by your scupper plugs or in your uh, under your hatch down there and it's always nice to be able to take this and really easily just soak it up, get it out of there. So always keep this, I just usually let it dry, I throw it in my hatch up front. Uh, always nice to have some type of um, some type of sponge with you. I see some guys, I always used to carry one of those little sponge balls that I stole from my kids, used to have fight, water fights with. Uh, but definitely bring a sponge. Next, right, since you have to have a life jacket, I recommend the Ison 33A Low Profile. I know this is personal preference, but I did a survey on my channel not too long ago, and I see that around 70, 80% of the people like the Low Profile version anyway. I did a review on this, I'll throw it up in the cards, you can check it out on my channel. But these, what, how, how they work is if you are fully submerged, they will, uh, explode and keep your head above water also if you want to manually inflate it you just tug on this and it goes poof as well and so what I like about this uh, I've got some neoprene back here and since I fish in the middle of summer I don't want something bulky on me I don't need the extra storage like a lot of the traditional life vests have I got that underneath my seat I got it in a variety of other places on my kayak so ice in 33a I know that you can get them still on Amazon but there's also some updated ice in versions as well so I'll go ahead and throw those in the links in the description below and the beauty about it being low profile is that you can kind of fold it up nicely and I usually stick it right behind my behind the seat backpack all right for those of you who like the fish and also tape this if you got a channel of your own you might be interested in a chesty which i have right here it's the same top uh, and i actually created a video of how to make this into all day power as you can see here's the battery on there so i'll throw that up in the cards or if i am using too many cards uh you can just check that out on my channel as well so it's pretty nice really easy um, and so let's move on to the next one something else i always have in my kayak is a safety horn these things are really cheap and they make a really loud noise if you're in trouble out there good to go just throw that I just keep that always keep it here in my kayak crate and as you can see it's been there for a while I haven't had to use it um, so it's rusting up a bit but always nice to have one of these now, something else I always keep in here is tools that you will need out on the water I don't need a ton but I also always need some type of screwdriver uh, so I can get down here as you can see all these are Phillips oh that one's not even tight um, so I usually go through a couple times a year and make sure the Phillips are all tightened up. And this one's super key. I always have a hex wrench because um, this sometimes will, after using it for a long time, will start to squeak. So I always have this. So regardless of what it is, make sure you have all the tools that you'll need so you don't ruin a day of fishing out in the water. So always have those in your kayak crate. 
All right, next thing I have, I don't actually carry a net. I just not a lot, not a lot of real estate on my kayak, so I don't want to use it by having a big bulky net. I always get my hooks caught in the net, and I just don't want it on my kayak. So I carry fish grips instead. I recommend the fish grip. Um, these things are awesome. They float, which is nice. And a lot of times how I utilize these, is if I catch a big fish and I'm trying to get a picture of it, uh, and I don't want it laying in the bottom of my kayak flopping around, I actually lip hook it and I'll put it back in the water and I'll put it on a DIY kayak leash. Um, this is another upgrade. I have another video of these. These are really easy to make for about 50 cents, 25 cents, and a trip to the thrift shop. Uh, you can make your high quality DIY kayak leashes um, for your kayak. You can put them on your paddles, your pliers, whatever it is you want to put them on. So these are awesome. Uh, just hook them to your kayak. Uh, if you have a native slayer, um, let me show you how I hook these up. Since every kayak's a little bit different, uh, let's put a carabiner on here. Hook it right there. And if you have a slayer, I uh, just take these around the handle, which are a little soft, and then boom. They just kind of sit there out of my way. Uh, and the beauty of it, although they float, you don't want to not know that you lost them accidentally. And so being that they got the leash on them, you're good to go. You're never going to lose your fish grips. And for the sake of other things that are leashed on here, I have these leashed, which are nice, not going anywhere. Basically, you don't want to you want to leash everything that you don't want to lose. A lot of things that I like to leash and I haven't done it yet are like scissors and I have toenail clippers. A lot of times I'll Velcro to my kayak and have them leashed out. Uh, I don't like these particular leashes you can buy them at walmart but here's the thing once you stretch them out they say stretched out so i prefer the ones that i made i just need to make a few more of them and next we have the tackle boxes that i carry with me these are the plano edge series 3600 uh, i like the size because it fits nicely boom right in your kayak crate fits perfectly in there so make sure you get the plano edge 3600 series uh, i got my poppers here I got my frog assortment here and I have my crankbaits here and so don't take up a lot of room here kind of fit them nicely I actually did a review of the Plano Edge 3600s I'll throw those up in the cards you can check it out on my channel wendelfishing.com so these things are pretty great uh, a lot of pros to them some cons to them as well so you can check those out in the review I also have a knife on board pretty big knife on board never had to use it um, but it's really easy I just kind of shove it in here um, really easy to reach behind me and grab it. A couple other things I carry with you in the hatch. I put some toilet paper in a bag. I'd also carry some extra clothes in a bag uh, in case you fall in, get wet, it's cold outside, so you don't ruin your day out in the water. I'll always have those available to you. I also highly recommend always having a rain jacket on hand, whether you keep it in your car or keep it in your behind the seat backpack. Uh, it's nice to have one, especially with a hood. So this is a Gore-Tex one from Merrill. I don't even know, I've had this thing for so long and it's held up very well so always nice to have one of these out in the water and if you haven't figured this out your yeti brand um, bottles fit nicely in here and also right there when the this is up so yeah buy one of those it's like it's perfectly made for it next let's take a look of what rods i take out there on the water so let's grab all the ones that i use two <laughs> three all right, that's all for now. I carry six rods with me. One, because I really just hate changing out lures. And also, if you fish a lot, um, you're going to use different rods, different types of lures, different types of line with those lures. And you don't want to have to, if you, if you just carry one thing, that probably means you're just fishing one thing. And so I carry six different rods. I troll with them. I got bait casters. I got spinning reels. The thing that I'm always going to have hooked up is this guy right here is the wacky worm. Typically, uh, it's going to be a one hook, a uh, five inch Senko hook for this hook through the center and either a uh, eight to 10 pound fluoro or some type of 10 pound braid. And that's how I'm gonna catch the majority of my bass out there in the water. It's the easiest way to catch a bass consistently. And I've caught my personal best with the wacky worm style. And I have a video of how to use the wacky worm. And just because you set it up like this and throw it in the water, um, there's a lot of nuances to, to working that in the retrieve. And so learn that, I got a video on that, the easiest way to catch a bass, and I'll throw that up in the card so you can check it out. All right, moving on. I'm also usually gonna have some type of tube bait set up. If it's in the, if it's the summer, I'm gonna have some type of frog set up. Uh, usually my staples, then depending what type, uh, what time of the year, how the water temperature, uh, how deep it is, will depend on the other lures that I set up. And I usually will plan this out the night before. As you see here, I have another articulating GoPro mount um, that kind of is pointed 
towards me. Uh, so I just got this recently, which I'm pretty excited about. There's a little track mount up here. Sometimes you'll find these. If not, you can buy the track mount and install them to any kayak, which I'm doing to this one, which I found in an Ohio River tributary. So I'm tricking that one out to making a fishing kayak. Um, so if you don't have this track mount, not a big deal. You can buy them for like 10 bucks. They make them metal and they make them um, polymer. But man, I'm pretty excited about this angle. All right, what else have we got over here? Oh yeah, so I'm gonna have, always gonna have some on uh, my favorite VMC, the Wacky Weedless. Uh, and then we got some standout. Uh, these are for drop shots. I'm also gonna keep a lot of my terminal tackle and I like these waterproof stowaways from Plano, the guide series. They're actually super waterproof and there's, if you put a lot of hooks in here and shake it up, they're not gonna jump from compartment to compartment because that, um, the lid comes down on the dividers really nicely. So also gonna throw this in here. A lot of my hooks, tackle, terminal, it's gonna be found in here. And look, still have a bunch of room in here. Also here's some optional things. I have a, a worm bag. If I'm using live bait, I'll, I'll be bringing this guy with me. Also have a casting net sometimes I bring. I have a first aid kit. I usually don't keep it on the kayak, but I will have it back in the car. And every once in a while, uh, I'll just keep this. This is a, a GoPro head mount. And I'll just keep this in my back. Sometimes I shove it in here if I want to use it for a different angle. I'll just keep it in my backpack. A lot of other things that I keep in the underseat storage here. Uh, I'm going to have my fishing scale. Uh, a lot of times I'll bring a fishing magnet in case I drop a pole in the water. I'll keep that in my backpack as well. Uh, fish marker buoy. I lost my old marker buoy so I'm going to be creating a DIY marker buoy. I went to Walmart and I saw two of them like $18. I was like, I can make one of these and they're really inexpensive. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Hit that sub and bell and you'll get that video in a couple weeks. A couple other things I'm not going to leave me home without is some insect repellent. I usually just throw that in my kayak crate. And another thing I'll do is I'll take one of my DIY kayak leashes and I'll put an old towel on here and basically just attach it here so and I'll shove the towel right down in here and it's always nice to be able to wipe off your hands and you start catching those fish they get really slimy hey guys and gals if you liked what you saw please hit that sub and bell and like button and I will keep them coming all right guys thanks see ya bye